What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to kern and track your type in Adobe Illustrator. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Kerning and tracking are going to be very important for your typography. You want to make sure that the spacing between the letters are pleasing to the reader's eye. One very important thing to remember is that no two typefaces are created alike. And even fonts within one typeface can have distinct differences. So as a general rule, you're going to kern 100% of the time. And I'll go ahead and show you the difference between kerning and tracking. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to kern these letters right here. So you go over here to your character panel. I'll just go ahead and drag this out of here. If it's not showing up for you, just go up to window type and then character or you can do command T on your keyboard or control T on a Windows so you're gonna find this little section where you've got the V and a little slash between the V and the A and this is actually going to adjust the spacing between two letters what I like to do is hold down shift on my keyboard and then the down arrow and you can see it's moving it a little bit closer to the T right there once I'm happy with where I have it I just hit enter and then I can just move the cursor over and then just do the same thing between the H and the E kerning takes practice so you have to be patient with yourself and only after doing it a lot will you come to master it. So what we're wanting to do here is we want to seek balance between the letters themselves. It's not simply just moving two letters closer or further apart. You want to make sure that overall the word is reading as pleasing to the eye. Now that I'm zoomed in on this type, I'm going to open up the space between the H and the E. So overall, we've got a good consistent flow in the spacing between these letters. And just compare it to the line of text that we have below, which we haven't done any kerning to yet. I'm going to go ahead and finish out this line of type. All right, so we have a good view of all of these. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of labels on here just so we know what the differences are. Hopefully, unkerned is a word. For the purposes of this video, it is. For the kerned version, you can see we've got good spacing in between the letters right here. They're not too close together. They're not too far apart. They're just right. And now I'll show you the difference between kerning and tracking. So as I said earlier, kerning is the spacing between two letters. Tracking is the spacing between all of the letters at once. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab your type and then right here, you'll notice that you can't enter anything in here. And if you try to, it'll give you this error message. Kerning on extended selections can only be set to auto or zero. To modify spacing between multiple characters, use the tracking option. So click on your type again. And now we can hold down shift on our keyboard and we can go down to negative 50 if we want to. And you can keep on going until those letters just squish into each other to the point of illegibility. We'll bring this back up to zero. And there are times where you want to do something like this. I don't use tracking nearly as often as I use kerning. For a sentence like this, you could probably go down to a negative 40 and call it done. However, you are a professional designer, so get in there and kern. Okay. And there may be some other times where you want to open up the spacing. So tracking is actually pretty good for that. The only downside, of course, is that it's opening up the spacing in between all of the letters. So it's not gonna be very consistent and I'll show you how. So I'm gonna put these two on top of each other and I'm going to set the spacing here to 250. And for this one at the bottom, I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. I went ahead and changed these to a monospace font because it's gonna be better for this example. So what I'm gonna do on the bottom is grab the type, create outlines, and then ungroup them, select all of them, click the first one, and I want to distribute the spacing by half an inch. So as you can see right here, they look very similar to each other. However, if you grab a line, right here, always do a line test and just kind of line it up on the outside of this T. You can see that it's not perfect. If you're a perfectionist like me, you want it to be perfect. So now the spacing in between these letters are exactly half an inch all across. The spacing between these letters are off. You can see that there's overlap on some of these boxes and some of the type. So really it all depends on what you're going for. If you've got a logo that's using a monospace typeface, then distributing the spacing is perfect. However, if you're not using a monospace font, then you wanna go in there and individually kern those letters. These letters on the top have been individually kerned. However, the ones at the bottom were just set to 250 across the board. Things like this are what set apart professional designers from beginners. And I'll also show you this. Illustrator has an option to choose between auto and optical kerning. It's really good for if you're putting together something quickly and it's not for a client or anything like that. The one on the top is going to be set to auto and the one at the bottom we're going to set to optical. So as you can see, it really does a good job of cleaning up the spacing in between the letters. The software is looking at the spacing in between the letters and judging optically how it should be spaced. This really does get you at a good starting point. However, I recommend keep going until they're all individually kerned. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that crash course on kerning and tracking. If you like this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications to be notified of all future content. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.